Hi, this is Holly with Presence Point, and we are pleased today to bring you another Shepherd in Action interview. So today I'm with Howard Porter. Howard, Howard is, a, um, I don't want to say old friend, but a very, very long time friend. Is that better? <laughs> um, Howard has walked with us, with Doug and with me from the very beginning of this Shepherd leadership journey 10 years ago. He has heard every little nuance when it first began up to the crazy things God is still doing. And he has been a partner with us praying and loving um, all along the way. So I am excited to introduce you to Howard Porter. Howard's from Auburn, Alabama, one of my favorite places after being there once or twice. <laughs> and uh, Howard is an entrepreneur, almost almost a serial entrepreneur. You know, he can't help but begin things and start things and create things and challenge people like me um, to grow and develop. So Howard, thanks for joining us today. We're glad you're here. Absolutely. And it is uh, an absolute pleasure to be with you this morning, Holly. And uh, just thank you for this opportunity. Uh, it's, a, it's a privilege. Let me tell you, my friend. So I'm going to ask the question. I haven't told anybody what you do because you do so many different things, right? So I'm going to start yeah. with asking the question, where do you shepherd? Uh, I, I shepherd in uh, different workplaces, primarily. I've uh, had had the great privilege being involved in in several different businesses, and uh, my probably greatest uh, time involvement is within a company called Global Canine Protection Group, which is uh, a strange strange business, not one you run across every day. We we use uh, canines uh, paired with uh, handlers to detect uh, explosives, firearms, narcotics, and uh, feel like we're uh, really on the front line of good versus evil, because anyone who would uh, put a bomb on an airplane or in a crowded stadium uh, is intent on uh, evil and certainly is motivated uh, by, by that evil intent. Mm. I think about, as you say that, I think about uh, two things. One is, it's almost like you're shepherding, the dogs are shepherding, right? Almost, and that, and that handler every day in what they do you're shepherding the organization and the business. And um, then my thought immediately goes back to the time that a dog alerted on my bag, <laughs> coming back into the country from Mexico. I'll never forget the, the petrified feeling. I felt like, I don't, I don't know what I have in there, but it was, it was only an apple, but he alerted on the apple. So I had to laugh thinking, oh, that was the most horrible, scary moment in my life. But we're grateful for what you do. So tell us um, how in that business, because you're not with every handler, every dog every day because they're all over the, the world. Tell me how in that business you shepherd and how you implement provision, protection, and presence. Sure. I, I, I'm, I'm in uh, regular contact with our headquarters staff and on calls regularly with, with our dispersed management team. And uh, I, I would say my, my uh, shepherding really uh, f falls into that uh, uh, stepping in occasionally and hanging back quite often when not needed. And a lot of times the difficult part is knowing uh, when not to jump in because uh, my tendency is to, if, if I feel like I know how to do something, I want to jump in and uh, sometimes exert my, my uh, experience a little more often than I should. So I've, I've had to hold back a, a good bit. And uh, as I've gotten a little bit uh, older and wiser, I've learned that a lot of, a lot of people are, are much more adept and more experienced at doing the things than uh, I am. Uh, but that uh, uh, get, get, getting, getting involved uh, pr primarily uh, on, on a multiple times a day uh, on calls with, with uh, uh, my uh, partner and CEO in the business, Eric Kerr, uh, I, I consider him a, a true friend. Uh, I'm old enough to, to, uh, to, to be his father and he, he considers me a mentor and I, uh, we'll, we'll pray together. We'll, uh, sometimes, uh, pull each other back, sometimes push each other forward, but always encouraging. And that's, uh, quite, quite often what I, what I do in the, the way of, uh, I guess provision is just providing, uh, a listening ear and, and sometimes uh, uh, the, the figurative staff pulling, pulling back uh, from going to places that we possibly shouldn't, shouldn't go. Uh, some, sometimes pushing to, to go ahead and, and take the step like that. Mm. So there's provision and there's also presence in that, right? There's a way that you're there, but not there. 
Uh, there's a way that you're available, but when they need it, and still the wisdom of when when not to push forward when you when you and yourself you kind of want to right when you know what's best otherwise. Right, right, yeah, and that uh, yeah. the, the the presence. I, I I try and be a a positive influence. Uh, I mean, we're 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 dealing with a lot of uh, former military. Uh, uh, law enforcement, and sometimes they can can be a little bit rowdy, uh, a little bit of a hard edge, and uh, I have to have to remind myself that I'm I'm not not one of the group, and uh, uh, some sometimes pull back a little bit, so I, I can provide a, a little bit of a, a uh, mm -hmm. leavening to the to the mix. Mm -hmm. I like that a leavening. Um, I, I'm thinking, Howard, as you're talking of how you. I want to say first challenged me. And I think there's something in, in shepherding. We often hear people saying that the good shepherds in their lives help them be better than they thought they could be, mm. right? Help them do things they didn't think they could do. And yeah. um, I remember, I'll, I'll, I'll tell the quick story, is when we were raising money to first print the leader's guide for the leadership from the shepherd's perspective workshop. And um, I, I called you and I said, Howard, if I, if I, Doug and I can do this, can you help us? If we can get this much, can you help us? And you challenged me and you said to me, Holly, who will use that leader's guide? And I remember saying, well, it'll be this organization, this organization, this organization initially, and then it could be anybody. And you said, and you go back and talk to them and see if they'll help you with that. And then come back and let me know. And I remember saying to you, how are you really gonna make me go to those other nonprofits and ask if they'll give for this one? Are you really going to make me do that, Howard? And you said, yes, I am. I go, really, Howard, you are? You're not kidding? No, I'm not. And you know, you taught me so much in that moment because the sweet miracle in my mind is I went back to those three organizations and I said, to be totally transparent, I'm doing this to, to, to be obedient to the Father and to honor a, a man that, we, that helps us and stretches us. So I'm going to ask you a question. And you know, you remember probably every one of those organizations met that. They stepped up. And they said, yes, we can do that. In fact, one said, Holly, I'm just headed into a meeting where we have extra money this year and I want to, we, we're trying to figure out what to do with it. And you know, it was um, how God used you in that moment to stretch me and my faith. And um, it was just a pretty sweet time. So there you, you're shepherding us in a way that you, you stretched us and you made us better, you know, than, than we think that we could be. Yeah. So, well, it, so I, that, let, let me let me let me interject. I, I, too, too many in in uh, the ministry uh, are, uh, I'd, I'd say, remiss in not asking uh, because there mm -hmm. uh, there really is a true gift in allowing others to be involved in what you do, mm -hmm. and and too often asking for money is so difficult. Uh, and I, I I I hate to ask for money from others. Uh, but when when others have asked me to to be involved, once once I've gotten involved financially, my my heart tends mm -hmm. to follow, and then I want to know what's going on, and and that is such a blessing. And being able for for you to ask those uh, organizations that that uh, are really benefiting and and uh, furthering the kingdom by by use of of those materials, really get to to take part in what you're doing in a much broader way than just uh, getting some mm -hmm. some literature from you. So I, I applaud Absolutely. you in, in, in doing that. Mm, thank you. Well, thank you for the challenge. Okay, so now here we are. And by the way, I should say, if you all know what guardian dogs are, my first real live experience with one that I got to love were two of Howard's, two or three. Do you still have those, Howard, those three guardian dogs? We, we do. Great Pyrenees. Mm -hmm. Great Pyrenees. And you, and you also still have sheep, right? Uh, we do. Uh, I, I say we. I, I, I use that term loosely. The uh, my my wife and my son uh, lay claim to the mouth. <laughs> uh, okay, and and are they? You introduced me to also to shepherd to sheep that shed. Yeah, and these you still are, have those sheep, right? Well, our, ours are uh, our hair sheep. Uh, they they they, uh, they don't have wool. They have uh, look from, from a distance look uh, more like a goat. Uh, just they, they're a, a a fur coat rather than the wool. Mm. It's just, it's just there's there are over a thousand different breeds of sheep in the world, and so as I'm learning and growing, that always intrigues me. Just like there are so many different kinds of people, right? That's right. So as we wrap up our time together, share with me a little bit what word of encouragement you have for other shepherd leaders as they're walking 
the road they're on, whether it's an entrepreneurial um, journey, whether it's a parental journey, whether it's um, whatever it happens to be, as a shepherd, what word of encouragement would you have for them? Remember that you're not alone. Uh, too, too often we, we get out on the trail uh, or the road that we're on, the direction we're headed, and it feels like we are absolutely by ourselves. Uh, and and it, it can be so, so lonesome. Uh, reach out, find, find others who, who share the, the, the goal, share the uh, mission that you're on and uh, uh, spend time with them. Uh, sometimes it's just a phone call, but uh, that, that is so important to be able to do that because uh, we, we, all, we all need that. It sounds like uh, be part of the flock, right? That's right, yeah. Yeah, you know the the good shepherd always goes after the always goes after the one. Our dear capital G yeah. capital S shepherd always goes after the one, and the same is true of a shepherd of true sheep. They always go after the one because we're meant we're meant to do life together, right? Yeah. Well, Howard, thank you, thank you for your time today, thank you for your love of Presence Point, your love of the shepherd leadership journey. I, I, you know, I treasure it. You know that, so uh, we're grateful. Well, I, so, ladies I and gentlemen, too. I hope you enjoyed this. Yeah, oh, thank you, Howard. So ladies Thank and you. gentlemen, I hope you enjoyed um, just hearing a little bit about a, a guy who's not a pastor. He's not, um, he's not uh, uh, talking just from a, a, his own, you know, just his own dreams or desires, but he's talking from his own experience of, of sometimes pushing in and sometimes pushing people to be who he knows they can be. And other time back, knowing um, that he's the leaven, right? That he's not, he's not the yeast, he's 11. And I love that reminder. So I pray this Shepherd in Action interview speaks to you somewhere in your heart. If so, just let us know. Um, if you want to reach out to Howard, let me know to that, that as well. And you can comment on, on this on the website or just email me at holly at presencepoint.com. So thank you so much for joining us. And we pray that these few minutes together helps you live even more deeply into your calling. Take care and have a great day. Thank you.